Hey guys, how's it going? My name is ASF Reviews and welcome back. Now, right here in front of us we have a metal melting foundry. This is the, if I can get the instruction manual real quick, the GG2000 Mini Smelting Furnace by Concept Innovators. Obviously, the link to this will be in the description below if you do want to purchase this. Uh, at this point, mine is about one and a half years old at this point and it, uh, it's kind of a bit dented, but that's fine. The thing works perfectly fine still. Uh, this goes over all of the safety things, what it comes with, which it comes with a crucible, tongs, and the actual furnace, of course. Uh, it holds two kilograms, which is around five pounds, I believe. Teaches you how to use this, but I'll teach you how to use that. And then your other stuff, your warranty, of course. Now, uh, real quick here in the corner, I have a few ingots that I have melted in the past. These are aluminum. I have obviously melted more than aluminum, and I make my own molds for my ingots, so that's pretty cool. Uh, here is the tongs that it comes with, right here. Mine are a bit, you know, dirty, because they've been used for one and a half years, so let's go ahead and grab my Lincoln electric gloves now these are the gloves that I use to protect my hands from the heat they fit me pretty well actually because my fingers do touch the end and they give me some good mobility so I can do everything I need to with these the other ones a bit dirty right now but uh, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the outside and showing you how to use it how to set it up where to use it and other things like that Okay, so right in here in front of us, we are now outside. I have all of the stuff set up. I am going to back up my camera a little bit. Notice that's a little too close here. There we go. But uh, I now have everything set up here. We have our gloves, our foundry, and our other stuff like that. Now, over here, I do have this. I do not plan on using this, but I do have tons of cans. Go ahead and, like, every single time, instead of throwing away a can, go ahead and collect it. Another big thing is... Wear jeans, okay? <laughs> jeans are very important for this because they will keep your legs semi-protected from the heat. Also, wear closed-toed shoes. Preferably, I wear boots, but I kind of don't have them at the moment, so just try to wear boots and jeans, and that will keep you protected. Uh, long sleeves would also be helpful, but I don't really need it right now. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get the foundry plugged in here just plugs into your regular 120 volt or 120 volt adapter so that's pretty easy to do okay so at this point I have everything plugged in I'm gonna go ahead and try to get close up while carrying my mic so I can still have good audio quality here is here's the mic by the way <laughs> so as you can see it's going up in temperature we're gonna go ahead and click set far left now, you can use the up and down arrows to change it on the far right one by one. But if you want to go quicker, you click this. Now I'm changing it by 10 at a time, okay? One more, I'm changing it by 100 at a time. And then one more, I'm changing it by 1,000 at a time. So you need to know the melting points of your metals. You can easily search that by just Googling it, and then you can find the melting points of your metals. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to the melting point. Uh, the melting point of aluminum is 1,200 and something. I can't remember the exact, but I'm going to set it to 1,600 so that the aluminum melts quickly. Uh, you don't want to go overdoing it. Like uh, if you have zinc, that's the 700 is the melting point. Now, if you were to turn that up to uh, like, I don't know, 1,400, it would probably boil the zinc, and that's very dangerous for your lungs. Uh, also, where protective stuff for your lungs of which I do have something to protect my lungs from the heat if you hold down set I'm pretty sure that is how you change it to Celsius because it does have an option for you uh, European people those those people who use Celsius at least
Okay, so now it is fully heated up. Is it at or it is at 1600 degrees? So I'm gonna go ahead and put on my gloves, and we will add our aluminum. Now, of course, you can melt a whole lot more than aluminum, as I have said before. Uh, you're going to want these tools, however, for when you actually do it. You're gonna want your tongs out here. You're gonna want some sort of a mold that you can pour it into. Uh, another mold here for smaller amounts. Safety glasses to protect your eyes from the heat and anything that may splash. Your gloves, of course, and then this is going to be full of water so I can pour water into it, or so I can dump the ingot into it to cool the ingot down quickly afterward. I'm now going to put on everything that I have other than this. Okay, so I don't need to put this on right now because it this is metal that I have melted before. It's clean, it's pure pure as I can get it at least. <laughs> and uh if you're melting anything like zinc or paint, if it if it has any paint on it, like uh Coke cans, you're gonna need to wear that mask. And even though you're wearing the mask, I still recommend getting far away from it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put on the gloves and add our ingot. Okay, here is our first ingot, the camera auto-focused. I'm going to go ahead and drop this in here, just like that. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close it up so that it can retain heat better. And then, uh, I'm going to see if I can pick up my skimming tool. You're going to need some sort of a tool, like a fork or something for skimming off the shavings. Uh, or, I mean the shavings, the oxidiz oxidized metal from when you melt it. So uh, it should have already started a little bit. Yep, it's already starting off there because I am at over like 200 more degrees than its melting point. So it's going to go a bit faster, which is good for me. Uh, this is really well insulated, actually, because I can't feel the heat from touching this. If I take off my gloves, I can feel the heat, but it's not really that much heat because it's actually pretty good at insulating it. So I'm going to put the glove back on and... We're going to go ahead and wait till that melts, and then we're going to add another and try to record that one slowly melting on camera. Uh, then, of course, I will add it to here, and then we will end off the video there. So I'm going to go get some water for this, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, all of the metal is melted, as you can see in there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add another bar, and I'm going to try to record it melting. So I'm going to go ahead and take the camera off of its tripod. I'm going to zoom back out because I don't need to be that highly zoomed in. I'm going to grab a piece of aluminum here and I'm just going to, there we go, that's added in. And that should start melting relatively soon because it already has tons of other metal in the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull it off the wall here. As you can see, it's already started melting. Okay, I'm gonna put my camera back on my tripod and we'll do the pour. Okay, so now I have everything ready. The metal is melted, so we're gonna go ahead and put on our gloves and get ready to pour it. Now, first of all, before we pour it, we do have to scrape off the slag. The easiest way to pick this up, because it's kind of hard with the gloves, is just to grab it with your bare hand and then put the glove back on <laughs> to grab the uh, tool for taking off the slag, which is uh, oxide, metal oxide. You do not want metal oxide. It makes your cast a lot more impure. So I'm just going to go ahead and scrape off the top layer. It's just as simple as that. Just put in whatever tool you're using, scrape off all of the nasty stuff to where it looks shiny, take off the nasty stuff, and just plop it right there on the floor. Uh, so now we are ready to pour it into our mold. Here is my mold. Uh, I do recommend heating up your mold a little bit first so that your mold can uh, adjust to the heat. 
Gonna just put it on here for a second, then flip it, heat up the inside a little bit, just so that it doesn't get heat shock and explode. <laughs> so I'm gonna set this down and then we will record a close up of me pouring it in. Okay, so this is as close up as I can get. I'm now ready to pour it and we will pour it. Okay, get on our gloves here, our safety gloves. Get our tongs here. Now it does have a little indent to show you which way the actual pouring is meant to go. Now look at that. Hot. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and pour it in the mold. There we go. Shake it a little bit, get some more in there. And then the rest, tap it out. Just tap it out onto the concrete and then you can go ahead and put your crucible back in your furnace, close that up, and that is all good. Now you have your molten aluminum sitting in its container here. And uh, of course you got all your slag, I'm going to show you the slag. This is all excess material, and you need none of that. So uh, we're going to go ahead and let this cool to at least where it solidifies, and then we're going to tap the bar out of the mold and add it to the water. Okay, really quick, I'm going to show you a really cool effect. I'm going to, I think I'm zoomed in here, so yes, I was zoomed in. Uh, I'm just going to get some water on my fingers and drop the water on the actual metal. Look at that. The water drop is just perfectly sitting there. This is called the Leidenfrost or Leidenfrost effect. And it, the water drop will just sit there until it evaporates. Now, if you're lucky, you can get it to move around a bit more. Like, uh, I had a few there that moved around. Okay, so at this point, as you can see, the metal is relatively solidified. I'm going to step over here. We're going to go ahead and use our tongs. Grab the actual brick here and just tap down a few times so that we get the metal in there loose. And then when you're ready, just flip it over like that. <laughs> and just keep flipping it around until it decides that it wants to fall out. I'm sure, at this point, I can reach in there and grab it. Uh, the water is a little hot, not enough hot enough to burn, but I do want to be a bit safe and let it sit in there. Uh, that was 1,700 degrees. Uh, once you are done, though, I'm going to say this right now, switch off your foundry. Turn off your foundry and unplug it. So that you don't have to bother with that later. Now, uh, I am going to have to let this sit in there for a little bit, and then we will be good to take the ink out and do a close-up examination, and we will end the video there. Okay, so now uh, the ink is fully cooled down. I'm going to go ahead and show you it up close, and we'll end the video there. Here is our total yield. I'm going to zoom out the camera because we want better quality. And let's let it autofocus. There we go. Here is our ingot. Very, very nice if you ask me. Now we have this, and then we have our other ingot, wherever that one is. It's right here. This one's a bit more smooth because this one's quite a bit older. But uh, here are our ingots. Uh, that will be it for this video. If you guys liked it, make sure you leave a like on the video, and I'll see you all in the next video.